This is the fifth video in the series on setting up a character uh, to use the Human IK system in Maya 2012. In this video I'm going to cover using the component editor to set rough weights uh, for your model and uh, as well I'm going to cover some, um, some constraining or parenting options to have other objects that aren't skinned follow the, um, follow the skeleton. So we'll start with the uh, component editor. Uh, basically what we're going to do here is we're going to set the head up to follow the head joint. Right now there's very little influence of this joint anywhere in this mesh. Uh, most of the um, most of the influence is in the arms. So you can see as I move the head here, or the arm here, the head gets really distorted. Uh, so what I want to do is uh, just select out the vertices of the head and it can be somewhat of a rough selection and I'll just um, grow that down using shift period and just grow that selection and I'll just get it right down to the neck and it doesn't need to be this really does not need to be um, a perfect selection because this is just going to give us rough weighting anyways so that's a reasonable selection go under window general editors component editor and in the component editor, this basically lists all of the influences on uh, any vert. So here you can see a whole list of the verts that I have selection, and these are all of the joints that are influencing those. We want all of the verts selected to follow the head exactly. So instead of going through and painting all this, which we haven't gotten into yet, uh, we just set it directly. So I'll select the first cell of the head, go down, uh, shift select uh, the bottom, uh, cell and then press 1. And because uh, auto update um, or hide zero columns is on, it drops out all of those other joints. Uh, so it just shows you everything is bound directly to the head now. So it's going to follow that 100%. So I'll go back to object mode, grab that joint and give it a rotate and now you can see the head stays um, solid, doesn't distort, looks really funky with the eyes sort of poking in and out uh, because the eyes are just staying perfectly still. So that's the next thing we're going to catch. Uh, and the weights are obviously no good on this. Uh, everything is just stretching across uh, one span. You can see there's uh, one vert that got left out and it's getting pulled real hard. Uh, not a big deal. Uh, we'll take care of that in the next video. Uh, so I'll show you a couple of different ways you could uh, handle this. The most direct way to do this is just select the eyes and then select the um, the head joint and just do edit parent. And now as I move this around, the eyes will stay with it. So that's sort of the most direct way and I still have full control over the eyes and I can move the eyes around however I want. Of course the eyes had to move uh, to accommodate so then the eyes would need to be frozen uh, so they'd have identity transform here. Uh, but the reason I don't uh, like this one as much as the constraint method is, you can see that the, my uh, organization over here, my mesh is starting to get mixed into um, my skeleton, which is not a huge deal. It's just um, you know, something that I would prefer to have all the mesh stay organized in this uh, mesh group and then keep my skeleton separate and then have a control system separate from that. It's really not a huge deal though. If you, that appeals to you, just do it that way. It's an easy way to do things. Um, but another way to do this is to group the eyes uh, individually. And uh, first let me just explain why you would need to do that. Uh, if I parent constrain <clears throat> the eye to the to the head joint it will follow properly but then if I need to key the eyes so I want to animate the eyes looking around then uh, the parent constraint would need to be on um, something a, a node above the eye otherwise you can't follow the parent and have control of um, the eye at the same time um, hopefully that makes sense um, so basically the way this would need to be handled would be you would select the eye and you would just group it to itself and then you would give that like uh, a name to indicate what it's doing so that's my uh, left eye parent group and I'll do the same thing over here and then select the head joint and then the group. You want to make sure you get the group selected and not the eye itself, but not the eye mesh. And then I'll choose um, constrain parent. Make sure that its maintain offset is on and then it's constraining all translate and rotate axes. 
do that and notice that the group uh, these channels that translates and rotates get taken over by the parent and this is why you don't want to have that directly on the eye you can then I could key this for example and these things would all turn green and I'd get a blend parent uh, but you can't you can't have both at once and that's why you have to have this sort of uh, buffer node above uh, which is what I have here so let me just go ahead and uh, select the head joint one more time and then grab the left eye parent group constrain parent and that gets parented in uh, the good news is when I select here notice that I can't tell anything that's gone on here these are still at identity um, and uh, from, from what I select in the viewport anyways uh, I can't even tell that it has a group the group is a thing that is constrained and the eye itself is left to key however I wish so now if I move this around it follows uh, the head joint just like it, you would expect it to and um, all my mesh stays inside um, a common group here. Again, that's not a big deal, just a personal preference. Uh, so that's pretty much it. I would do the same thing in terms of the component editor to grab the end of the foot, for instance, down here, apply that all to the toe, and then maybe uh, to the back of the foot back here. Just um, use the component editor to get really rough uh, weights applied to this thing because a lot of times when you do uh, default skinning you end up with influences that you don't expect and um, aren't desirable so uh, I will continue to do that uh, but after showing you on the head it's the same thing I would just be doing it to the toe and then to the foot um, and I would probably stop at the foot actually and then just paint everything from there in and maybe I'll do it on the outside of the hand and come in uh, another reason to do that is sometimes you just have influences uh, for instance on the thumb here if I pull this obviously that's not what I want I want this to be bound into this uh, chain over here so I could just do that really quickly using the component editor okay so in the next video I'm going to start on uh, actually uh, cleaning up uh, the weights using the uh, paint tool